Hey you guys, welcome back to my channel. Um, doing a really quick update. This is really gonna be a two part um, update. I'm going out of town next week and I want to share what happens when we leave, when I leave and the garden is not tended to. It gets watered every day still or whenever it's not raining, I can do that remotely, but there's no weeding going on. There's no um, checking for bugs and all of those things. So just wanna share with you what I was able to get done today before, um, ahead of time before the vacation. So real quick, let's take a look at this. So I'm here in my front yard and I was able to come out and this bed doesn't really get, ever since I started using this fabric, it's uh, more like a polymer, like a plastic, but ever since I started using it, I don't have weeds very much anymore. I use this to suppress weeds, but we do not put mulch over the top of it because that does not work in Houston, Texas. It would be a tangled, weedy mess if I did that. But I do use it in this way and a lot of gardeners I find are doing it this way now. But I just lay it out in the bed and since I've expanded up here, um, I was growing some shallots up here because you can't see. If you saw my last video, I explained why, you know, I started growing up here. I try to grow things that you can't see from the street because I am in a heavily regulated HOA. But HOA community, but um, I started growing back here, things that you can't see from afar. So I was able to come out here and relay all of my plastic. And also, uh, if you saw two videos ago, I think it was, I talked about how I succumbed to the squash vine borers again. Well, their cycle should be done now. So I've planted more squash up here. And the reason I planted the squash up here is because I've not had, I do try to rotate crops, but my garden is not huge. So I've had squash everywhere and back already. So I thought, let me try it up here and maybe that will help beat the boards as well because I've never grown squash up here. So we'll see how that goes. So I got that done today. Here's my, uh, that one's a yellow squash then a zucchini, and then another yellow squash. And I have two spaghetti squashes that I'm gonna plant out back. So, speaking of, let's head back out there really quickly. All right, excuse the mess, excuse the mess. Head out. Yeah, I got a big mess out here. So um, since I'm having to start over in the garden, I have seedlings going over here. Um, some in pots. Uh, what else? More in pots. <laughs> All of this will be cleaned off before we leave because we get severe weather like very, very quickly. Um, more seedlings. I almost lost a squash. This is spaghetti squash. I'm gonna still try to plant it, but I had three of them. I lost one and almost lost that one. But all of that is fine. I'm not doing anything over in this area. I might try to cover that section over there, but I don't know if I'm gonna get to it. Mm, everything else looking okay. Over here, I was able to top off part of this bed just part of it um, only because I need to get in and pull some grasses and some weeds from that other side I don't think I'm gonna get to that before we leave either um, this bed I was finally able to get it completely weeded take out everything that was destroyed by storms and this is what it now looks like this is starting over you guys so I added in some dirt that I made from peat moss and regular topsoil and garden soil and added in some bone meal. What you see down here, the white, is diatomaceous earth because for some reason I have ants like crazy. I don't mind it so bad, but when I'm in here and I'm trying to work, they will bite and they will sting and it is not fun. So that's why you see that, to just try to control those a little bit. So. I'm gonna do the same thing back here. You can see my black fabric right there. I'm going to spread that out just to, again, suppress the weeds a little bit. 
and then we'll see what things are looking like when we come back stay tuned all right you guys so here we go we just got back in last night um and this is my first chance to go outside i have not seen anything yet so you guys are going to see it right along with me um just you know my reaction i have no idea what it's gonna be hopefully things are all good so let's go take a look let's start in the front because there's not um a whole lot going on out there so this will be nice and quick um none of my plants died by the way you guys i got these little these are like little plant waters got those on amazon because they looked cute and i knew we were going to be going out of town so i thought i'd give them a try they seem to work pretty well i think um and i think this is a lily i'm not sure i got this from a neighbor and it has grown you can see how this is a new leaf it has grown a lot while we were gone now i do know excuse the noise by the way someone's getting a new roof um because remember we had several storms really bad storms so that's the noise forgive me for that but anyway um where was i going what was i saying um yeah my neighbor gave me the these little plants and she said they they can be invasive so there's another one that's doing really really well um and this one is not doing as well i think something's been chewing on it but um this is actually better than it was before we left because you can see there's some new growth as well. So I'm just gonna baby that a little bit. But here, this is the squash, the yellow squash that I transplanted out. And this one is the zucchini. The zucchini clearly is doing better than the squash. Um, and then there was another squash plant right there, which I believe either a squirrel or a duck probably just came and completely uprooted that thing just ate it um the reason i know that that happened is because we don't have deer anymore but normally if it was like bug damage you would see something on the leaves or you know see something underneath the leaves um this is looking pretty good actually this is looking really good i'm very excited about that because remember my squash i they succumbed to the squash vine borer again that's why i pulled these up front but um, normally, if it was bugs, you would see still the plant there, but you would see like damage. You wouldn't see it completely gone. That to me says that an animal came over here and picked it up and ate it. And our ducks do come right up to the door if you let them or if there's nobody there to shoo them away. So the front, you know, like I said, not a whole lot going on up here. So that's why I wanted to start up here. Things are looking pretty good. Um, weeds are staying down pretty well because of this little uh plastic here and i may come back up here and plant um another squash in the place of the old one just you know sow the seed directly into the soil now for the good part and this is the part i'm really scared of let's go see what's going on in the backyard All right, so here we go. Hubby's already outside um, surveying the situation. So let's go see what's going on. Now, there was a lot of rain, thunderstorms and things while we were gone. So we did try to clean up quite a bit. You can see there's nothing like on the table or anything. None of the decorations are out here. Um, I just pulled some things back out like that thing and some of the pillows. I just pulled those back out. But luckily it wasn't heavy storms like we've been having before if there were all of this stuff all of those would be just gone it would be they were thrown all over the yard before and that would have happened again so it was just rain this time and clearly there was no hard rain up here because these babies need water they're very, very dry they're parched actually i might have lost a few but i need to come in and water those but um in the other pots everything is looking of course the basil was going to bolt of course it was um but not too bad uh this i'm sorry mosquitoes are getting me this av these avocados did really well like both of these did not have leaves when we left only this one did and not nearly as many leaves same thing over here i think this is lettuce and those are some jalapenos that 
I just threw in there because they weren't doing anything before, so I was getting really frustrated. So I just threw a whole bunch of them in there. Um, the grass is insane. The grass is absolutely insane. Um, and Hubby's gonna come out here and cut it, but I wanted to give y'all the quick and dirty of it. Um, the tomatoes over there are struggling just a little bit. Not tomatoes, I'm sorry, the cucumbers are struggling just a little bit. You can see there's some yellowing and some browning going on. They are parched. Even though it did rain and even though I did keep the sprinklers running, um, the sprinklers do go on a rain delay by themselves. So I just didn't bother messing with them. I just wanted to see what they would do on their own. So this right here, you guys, this is like a jungle. It's a mess. But check this out. This right here is my cantaloupe. And when we left, that cantaloupe, that's ready to pick right now. When we left, it was just a baby. I showed it to you a little bit earlier. Um, the poor little marigolds. I'm gonna have to come out and pull those because they're just being smothered. Oh, look at this. Can you see that? There's another cantaloupe in there. Wow, this is doing really great. I did not expect that. It's my first time growing cantaloupe. But the marigolds have just been smothered out by this cantaloupe. And look at that, there's another baby. So like when we left, there were flowers on here, just like you see right there, there were flowers. But there was only the one baby. Oh, look at this. See, and when I say baby, this is what I mean. That's a baby. That right there is a baby. That right there is a baby that looks like it has blossom in it. But um, I'm gonna have to come out here. This is pretty much taken over. So the little marigolds, there's another one. They're not getting any light. They're like, I'm being, sh I'm being, like all the light is being taken from me from the melon, which that is just so great. I, that's my first time doing that and I'm just so excited about it. And these are black eyed peas. And you can see this is all new, this is new growth. It's beautiful, but it has just taken over. All of this from here all the way over to there and going up the fence a little bit there. All of that is one black eyed pea plant. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Now, this I knew was gonna happen. There's nothing we could do about it. These pods were not on this okra when we left. So it flowered produced the okra and the okra got way too big like that's not going to be edible raw we won't be able to grill it or put it in a salad or anything but what i will do same thing down here that's a red burgundy up there that's a red burgundy sorry there was a b this one is a clemson smite spineless that's this is all one plant no yeah this is all one plant this is clemson spineless all of these that these three, there's three back there that are too big to just eat raw or to make say okra and tomatoes, stewed okra, anything like that. Only thing I can do with them, there's another one, crimson spineless. This one looks like a jambalaya. Um, see how thick, it's super big. Normally when I do like this, and it doesn't just snap off, that lets me know that it's really tough. And the only thing I can do with those is say, make a gravy, um, which takes a long time, like a vegan gravy. It takes a long time, but it's totally worth it, especially if you're vegan and you want that meat tasting or meat, meaty kind of gravy that doesn't taste like veg. It actually tastes like the true gravy and has the consistency of a true gravy. That's what I'm gonna make with those super huge okra pods. Nothing else I can do about that. I mean, the plants are just gonna do what they're gonna do. And this right here is a baby watermelon vine. Like, I'm gonna have to come and clean this up because if hubby's gonna cut the grass, he, I mean, he picks things up, but he's not gonna come out here and move all these vines out of the yard so that they don't uh, get cut by the weed eater. Look at this, here is a baby, a baby watermelon. When we left, I didn't think this thing was gonna make it actually. I didn't think it was gonna make it, but now it's got babies on it. Okay, let's go over here. I'm so sorry, you guys, like walking in this grass is almost like a hike <laughs> in the woods or something. 
Um, these are my patio baby eggplants. They're loaded. They're kind of loaded down. Um, so I need to come out and really, I just need to come out and harvest some things. All the weeds, this is stuff I didn't get to before we left. Let's see what's happening over here. This is a shishito pepper. It's doing okay. It's pretty small, it's supposed to be small. Um, my peppers are not doing so, so great, actually. So I need to get over here and get some of these weeds out of here so that they don't have to compete the nutrients. Again, the basil. Before I left, I did plant out some seeds. Oh no, what happened there? Oh God, the ants. I think I told y'all about this, but there's ants again. And look at this, they're all over the place. Look at it. I'm constantly fighting these things. So I'm gonna be fighting them again today, I guess. Uh, but anyway, I did plant some more green beans before I left. These are pole beans, Kentucky pole bean and a yellow pole bean. And then the basil, that's doing okay. And calendula. And then these two are bush beans. Let's see what else we got. There's another pole bean. So the other pole bean did not do so well. It didn't come up, it looks like. And then here's another basil that's going to seed, which is okay. I'll just come out here and clip off the tops or, you know, use some for dinner or something and it'll be fine. Here, just like up front, this is a spaghetti squash. And I actually transplanted two of them. One is completely gone, which lets me know that, you know, Mr. Tickles, the squirrel, probably came out here and ate it. I may or may not come and add another one. This was the bed that I did get to before we left and, you know, added in some extra dirt and compost and peat moss. And it still looks pretty good. The weeds are still under control. I'm happy with that. Back behind the spaghetti squash right there, that is a moonflower. I cannot wait for that to, you know, get bigger and grow along this fence. And when it does, of course, I'll show you guys. It's actually very, very beautiful. It's a vine that just will completely take over this whole area and act as sort of like a privacy shield along the iron fence. So I'll show you that when it happens, but I got some work to do, you guys. Handling up on the ants in that pot and the little mound that they made right here. Listen, if you guys have any tips on dealing with the ants, outside of diatomaceous earth, I've tried that, outside of boiling water because it will kill anything that it touches and vinegar it will kill anything it touches you know hit me up let me know what you use if you have ants in your garden that bad i have them like crazy so hit me up and let me know what else you use there's ants also all around here i meant to get to that before we left um but i didn't so that's something else that i have to come out here and handle there's just as soon as i lift up that grow bag right there which had potatoes in it as soon as I lift that up there's gonna be ants everywhere so I'm not looking forward to that obviously I need to come out here and weed all of this and obviously the HOA needs to come out here and cut the grass and weed it as well so that's pretty much it you know this is what happens in seven days in the garden when we're not around I'm just gonna come out here and move some things out of the way so that we can cut and so that we can mow and edge the yard and get over there in that corner get all the weeds and things out of there and just after that the water we will be turning on the sprinklers or running the sprinklers um, automatically tomorrow and we'll see how things look after all of that is done and you can't do it right now it's super duper hot out there but I do promise to give you a, um, just a shot, a quick shot at the end here of how the yard actually looks when it's, you know, maintained and taken care of, not left to its own devices for seven whole days. Okay, that's much better. Great harvest as well. You guys, thanks for watching what happens when you leave the garden unattended in zone 9A Houston, Texas.